Hello and welcome to Matthew's Military Moments. Today I will be talking to you about the British infantry soldiers' uniform and equipment from 1944 to 45 in Northwest Europe. To begin with, the uniform. I am wearing the khaki battle dress, blouse and trousers, and it was based on pre-war skiing attire and gave the soldier the much needed ability to manoeuvre himself on the battlefield. On my head, I'm wearing the general service pattern cap, also known as Caps Ridiculous. This replaced the earlier field service cap shown here. On my upper arm, I am wearing patches. This is a shoulder title. Then you have the divisional flash and brigade insignia. In this pocket here, the soldier carried his service and pay book. This was used as a form of recognition along with his identity discs. This rather large pocket here was the soldier's map pocket. On the right leg is the first field dressing pocket. This was in the same place on every soldier so it could be found in case of an emergency. Around my ankles I am wearing web anklet gaiters. These were designed to stop the ends of the trousers being caught or torn on anything and stop things from getting inside the boots. Finally, on my feet I am wearing black ammunition boots. Over here we have the standard issue number four rifle. It was bolt action and had a magazine of 10 rounds. It had two sights, a battle sight and a leaf sight. The leaf sight was for further distances, whilst the battle sight was for closer distances. On the end could be fitted the spike bayonet. Next, the webbing. This is the soldier's large pack. It was carried in unit transport and carried additional clothing warm clothing and anything the soldier would not need immediately during combat phases. This is the great coat. It was carried inside the large pack. Next, the main webbing. The webbing could be split into two sections, the fighting section and the survival section. In the survival section is an entrenching tool which can be used to dig shell scrapes when necessary, two point water canteen, and a 1943 pattern respirator or gas mask. The fighting section consisted of a spike bayonet fitted here and two ammunition pouches. In each ammunition pouch, the soldier would carry a bandolier of 50 rounds for his number four rifle, one magazine of 30 rounds for the section Bren gun, and a number 36 Mills grenade, not shown here. On the far side, we have a leather jerkin. It was worn during colder climates, a Mark III Tercel helmet and a shovel for digging in as well. This is the Bren Mark II. It was carried within the section and is shown here in the light roll which was most commonly used. It is fitted with a 30 round magazine and has the sight up ready for engagement. Within a Bren fire team there was a Lance Corporal who commanded it, the Bren number no. 1 who would fire it and the Bren number no. 2 who would who would carry six magazines worth of spare ammunition in the larger utility pouches. He also carried the spare parts wallet and the spare barrel wallet shown here. This is the Mark II helmet. This was the most common helmet worn from the Normandy landings up until VE Day. It is shown here with scrim, which was used to break up the silhouette of the soldier. We spoke about the entrenching tool earlier. The handle could be fitted with the spike bayonet, like so, and could be used as a mine prod when going through French fields. Carried in the entrenching tool carrier was Blanco to keep the soldier's webbing clean, Dubbin for his boots, brushes for his boots as well, a pull through for his rifle, and wire gauze and cloth. This is a rubberized canvas ground sheet. It could also be worn as a poncho, but was mainly used as a ground sheet. This is a hold all. It mainly contained what the soldier needed to keep himself clean and shave with. Further forward, we have a hairbrush and the housewife sewing kit with wool for darning socks, a thimble, needles, spare laces, and hobnails for the soldier's boots. Before entering a combat phase, the soldier was issued with two 24-hour ration boxes 
and one emergency ration tin. This was to only be opened in case of an emergency or upon the order of an officer. This is the Tommy cooker. It was used for cooking the soldiers' food. They place one hexamine cube from inside here in the gap and they put their food with inside the ration tins and they place the ration tins on top. Also, they would have a mug, a knife fork spoon set and water sterilizing tablets shown at the front. This was the warm clothing carried in the small pack. Spare socks, gloves and a cap comforter more commonly known as a commando hat. Also a, wool, a woolen jumper. Soldier would also have a handkerchief, a face veil and his first aid kit with first field dressings, scissors, bandages, a china graph with an elastoplast wrapped around it marking where morphine had been injected. Next the 1943 pattern respirator or gas mask. Carried with this was two anti-gas ointments for applying to gas burns, anti-dimming agents. These were to stop the eye pieces on the gas mask from steaming up. And finally, eye shields to stop gas getting at the eyes. These are the soldiers' personal effects. As mentioned before, the soldier carried his service and pay book and identification tag, a clasp or pocket knife with a blade, a can opener and a marlin spike. The soldier might carry a notebook and pen as some kept diaries. Some soldiers had watches that they brought with them or they would have a watch issued to them. A pipe with tobacco and and a lighter, cigarettes as part of the soldiers 50 cigarettes a week, some loose change from wherever the soldiers served, a bible for Christian soldiers and his wallet. Finally we have miscellaneous and section equipment. To start with this is the bolt or working parts cover for the soldiers rifle, a hand torch this was one of the variations of the torch or lantern the soldier would carry. The May West Life Preserver. In sections, there would be bolt cutters carried. Finally, the machete for cutting through thickets. This was the British infantry soldiers uniform and equipment in Northwest Europe from 1944 to 45. It would be carried in any place the soldier could stuff it, in pockets, pouches, in the webbing, or in the small pack. It all weighed around 50 pounds, not including the helmet, the large pack, and the great coat. Thank you for watching, and look out for more installments of Matthew's Military Moments in the future.